for all you guys who are brand new to trading, if you Google hammer in uh, Japanese candlesticks, and I'm paraphrasing obviously, uh, it is going to be a signal for a short term reversal. Now that reversal could last. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com um, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Quite uh, a day today, quite a turnaround today uh, for the NASDAQ Bulls. Uh, kind of a tale of two, uh, of two cities, uh, Charles Dickens reference. Um, if you guys remember uh, all the way to yesterday, which we had uh, the weekend video, we, you know, we continued to talk about the weakness in technology and, and, and pretty much um, everything was uh, being sold pretty aggressive. Nothing was being spared uh, from the leaders, uh, Apple, uh, to, you know, to, to names like Tesla, to Amazon got you know, really beat up, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks. And the question was, you know, how aggressive uh, was this selling potentially uh, was going to happen going into today's session and you know we got our answer pretty pretty fast at the open uh, at one point the Nasdaq was down you know 300 handles right it's pretty pretty big move and you know your favorite names more chances than not probably got beat up uh, not only all of last week but a spillover into today's session the question was where was the bleeding going to start because we, we even talked about this in the webinar eventually okay you're going to have some sort of intrinsic value in your favorite company so for example if you're a fidelity magellan or any you know any mutual fund index fund whatever even a hedge fund okay um eventually something is going to catch your attention and be deemed attractive maybe not cheap but deemed attractive and that was the only question so we went through uh, multiple channels we talked about this whole uh three you know, we talked about this whole 377 area over the over the weekend. And when you saw the kind of the, the start to the day and you could see it, you had a pretty big decline right from the word go. They, they, they brought down, they took out 377 like it wasn't even there pre-market. And the next thing you know, opening range lows, you forget about 377. We literally went down from uh, 374 all the way down to 369. Again, that's a big, big move. It's not something that you could just roll your eyes and say, yeah, what's the big deal? It's only five points. Yeah, that's a big deal, right? So uh, the question was, were we gonna go all the way back down uh, to test the bottom of the range here, or were the bulls enable or, or able uh, to, to muster some sort of comeback? And kudos to the bulls, okay? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't something uh, earth shattering that we haven't seen before. Apparently, the market found its intrinsic value. It found its area that it looked attractive. And once they came back and reclaimed uh, this 374, uh, which was the 150 day moving average, you started seeing some life out of a bunch of names. Not crazy, right? It wasn't to the point of everything went gangbusters up 500 points, but there was a lot of really good progress and slowly but surely, especially towards lunchtime or so, you started seeing a lot of names that were really beat up from last week uh, going into today, starting to get some life. And they started going one by one, which was really, really cool. And the one that really stood out, I, I think a lot of people are gonna turn around and say, well, Tesla had a great turnaround, and it did. It really, really did. But the one that stood out today was NVIDIA. And the reason why I say that, we talked about this area here uh, over the weekend update, how important that 270 level was. And NVIDIA literally opened up. I mean, it lo literally opened up right here near this uh, rising rising daily support of 63 and went right through it. The craziest part about it is, as we discussed on the weekend update, uh, going into Friday for, for this week, if you guys remember, we talked about there were 260 puts being, being bought. When the market opened up and the video was getting like like really hit, okay, we started seeing 240 puts. They were they they completely bypassed 
uh, the two, you know, the, the 255s, the 250s, it went right down to the 240s. And what's good about it is NVIDIA, just like with the Qs, it reclaimed the level, okay, in this case was the 100-day, you know, 100-day uh, SMA, and they completely rebounded, right? And you started seeing a lot of names doing exactly the same thing, uh, Apple uh, and Amazon, although Amazon never went green, look at the hammer, right? And that's the theme going into tomorrow's session. This is a 100-point turnaround, literally a 100-point turnaround uh, in Amazon, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second, but you started seeing the darlings that were once leaders in the market that were completely killed, finally get a little bit of value. You got a little bit of a turnaround or a lot of turnaround towards the afternoon session. And just the way the cues put in this major hammer, right? Really, really big hammer for all you guys who are brand new to trading. If you Google hammer, in uh, Japanese candlesticks, and I'm paraphrasing obviously, uh, it is going to be a signal for a short-term reversal. Now that reversal could last three hours, that reversal could last for three minutes, that reversal could last for three weeks, we don't know. This is why we play the game, but at least on the closing basis, super bullish action uh, into the close, a lot of names got uh, firm very, very quick, got aggressive into the close, and now that's setting up uh, a dead cat bounce tomorrow. And, and the reason why I say dead cat bounce or continue with dead cat bounce from today's session, for the stocks or the market to, to deem it could be a rally, they need to reclaim the 50-day moving average. As you can see on the queues, we're, no, we're nowhere near the 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is around that two... 393 level. So we're going to need like two weeks worth of rallying to kind of reclaim macro areas. But I don't see why we couldn't at least come back another day or two to rally into the five day moving average. And that's exactly the theme going into tomorrow. The one thing about dead cat bounce is when you are getting your, your list ready for the next day, the one thing you have to take in consideration for a dead cat bounce to play out into the next supply, which is usually the five-day moving average me measure potential, you're going to need room. So if a stock closed today, let's just say at $43, and the five-day moving average is 43 and a half, there's no trade there. There's no room there. There's not enough juice uh, from pillar to post that make the trade wise. So you're going to need to find stocks with heavy average true ranges. So for example, a name like Tesla, right? They got blasted today, literally blasted. We talked about how important that 1120 violation was. It took out the 1010, which we talked about uh, on the weekend video and went all the way down. If you can see the 60 day moving out, 60 minute moving average, it went all the way down to the 980 area. Again, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second, but the good part about it is it, it held some level. It started rallying back. It went green on a day and it finally took out this whole macro channel i'll show you in a second here that really exploded to the close so for tomorrow's session guys do your list make sure you have room so for example tesla right tesla has room to the 50-day moving average right has room roughly to the 50-day slash five-day moving average there's still about 20 points there right a name like nvidia for example right gets above today's channel Still has about six points to the next supply. Apple, for example, right? Again, it doesn't have a huge amount of room, but still has about two, two and a half dollars to the next supply. So anything that you are thinking about trading for tomorrow, uh, the first order of business or your first target should be number one, it has to take out today's highs, establish a new high, retrace and confirm that opening range high. And the first order of measure potential, you're not thinking about big, big move. You're thinking about small micro potential, usually back uh, to the five day supply where there creates a new battleground in the days ahead. But instead of talking about or worrying about that a stock can reclaim the 50 day moving average, we're still so far away from that. The small thing to do is take baby steps, start identifying channels that potentially could give you cash flow into the five day, close above the five day. And now we're talking about uh, bigger potential for the next couple of days uh, towards uh, the end of the week. So let's talk about, right? Let's talk about some pivots to today. Uh, as you can imagine, everything got murdered, right? Uh, on the watch list last night, uh, on the weekend, on the watch list, right? We had, look, here is the watch list. I'll give you, I'll give you a perfect example here. Uh, where the hell is the watch list? Where the hell is the watch list? Uh, 
Did I not put the, the watch list on the Twitter feed? I might have not. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this doesn't really make a difference. Uh, 1023 channel, uh, when Tesla gapped down this morning, uh, December 23 channel is now 90, 997. If it builds below, it can see 988 and then 966. So Tesla lost its initial channel, right? Lost its initial channel here. Uh, this is right over here. Lost this whole channel here. Uh, lost 996, went all the way down to 980 before a reversal to the upside. There was a really aggressive pivot back to the upside in the afternoon. We'll get to that in a second. But Tesla got hit this morning. This one, the initial pivot uh, was 32.38. So it put in its opening range low, literally 35, 36 points below the natural pivot that I wanted. But again, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, Amazon got destroyed. I mean, literally destroyed um, in the morning session. Yeah, 32.02 needs to confirm the pre-market low. The potential for the initial push was 31.81, basically the bottom of this channel, 31.81. It went through that 381 like it wasn't even there. Uh, Amazon got just destroyed today. It, it took down this whole channel here and went all the way down, uh, literally all the way down to 3126. So just even on the gap down the opening range, there's at least 75 points uh, to the downside there as well. Obviously, huge, huge macro channel. And that's, again, the theme. Big, big hammer, which represents a short-term buy signal uh, you know, whether it's Amazon, whether it's NVIDIA, whatever favorite stock you have, but that's kind of the same theme uh, playing out for tomorrow. Holix never got down to the 69 level. Uh, Docu got, you know, got hit pretty bad uh, at the open. Uh, Docu, macro short setup. Uh, any close will 3150 confirms earnings lows and starts several days, uh, several weeks of cycle. And it looked like before the market turned around, uh, Docu was going to get absolutely murdered. So it took out the 3150. Uh, that was this channel again. This is we talked about this on the weekend update. Uh, went all the way down to like 126 and change, and then obviously everything reversed and it went down with it. But again, big big move uh, at the open. Uh, Ford never got the 25. Uh, win another name that got flushed again. We've been talking about this win uh, win for you know for a little bit of time. Uh, so win finally lost the 83 channel and traded right down to 80 bucks where we talked about uh, in the webinar for a potential soft landing traded right to uh, 79.82 and you can see why uh, 80 was the rising support off the daily so nice move there on win uh, and yeah I mean you know get down I mean get down to uh, get down to 25 percent in the 982 level and right to uh, 980. Uh, at one point, Netflix was actually strong and then it completely lost like 20 points out of nowhere. Obviously, never came close uh, to confirming 545 to the upside. And as you can see here again, 80 is the next support. Low of the day is 79, uh, 82 for a win. Uh, 128 in deck went to 126 and change on that. And here is the upside, right? Here is the upside. And we saw in the afternoon two separate buyers come in when the stock was like, 1023, 1024, really a pretty good uh, rebound off the lows, but two buyers came in with size. Uh, they came in with about a half a million bucks premium for the 1065 uh, weekly calls. And that really set it off. So 1033 needs a strong base uh, for more upside. Initially, it was a pretty decent cash flow move, uh, caught a little cash flow move, but then when it reclaimed that 1036 on the initial move, uh, Tesla went nuts. It went absolutely nuts, or as we say all the time, Tesla just won Tesla. Uh, and again, this is why there's nothing even close uh, to Tesla uh, on the board. So here is the whole uh, 1033, right? This whole sneaky pivot here, this whole 1033 level, and it went initially to this 1036. They reclaimed 1036, went to 1039, went to the 1056 level, and just absolutely went bonkers. Uh, into the close. So tomorrow, if it confirms today's channel, there's still, yeah, there still is another 15, 20 points in the move, you know, in case we get a day two uh, dead cat bounce on everything. So uh, let's talk about some names that I do like for tomorrow. Again, we talked about Tesla. We talked about NVIDIA. Again, you, you can make your, your list of favorite stocks. They're all going to look like the same, right? Here's another hammer on AMD. If it starts, you know, confirming today's channel, you know, got another three, four dollars into it in case we get a really powerful uh, rally for tomorrow. But you could basically take any stock. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, 
you know, Microsoft, you got a hammer, uh, Apple, you know, you got a hammer, you got a hammer everywhere, right? Hammer time, dun, 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 right? Hammer time everywhere. A uh, couple of names, Amgen. Remember we talked about Amgen over the weekend update? This thing is ready to go, folks, right? This is the highest close in the whole formation. All it needs to do is reclaim this channel tomorrow and this thing is gone. Uh, Lucid might be a day or two away, but just in case, just in case, uh, they did come for the 44 and 45 weeklies. I still like, you see how it got rejected back-to-back -back days on the 50 day? If this thing starts reclaiming the 50 day, maybe this thing wakes up as well. And let's keep an eye on Rivian. One of their uh, executives, um, one of their executives, I think resigned, they left the company, whatever the case may be, uh, stock is down after the close. If you guys remember, last week we had this really aggressive pivot on Rivian to the IPO lows. Now let's watch it again. If it gets down to here and violates, maybe this thing can see 72, 70 uh, on the measured potential move into that channel. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Again, it's a crazy market, right? That's the whole point. It's a crazy, crazy market. And every day we're just trying to do our best to make some sense out of it. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all.